Sitting in the studio with me during that interview was Danny Gray. Now, Danny is the founder of War Paint for Men and a new initiative called JAAQ, which stands for Just Ask a Question. I thought your head was going to fall off in, in, in listening to, mm. to Marjorie. Was that because you agreed with, with what she was prescribing in policy terms or the experiences? A bit of both, if I'm honest, Alistair. So some of the big quotes that were mentioned there were about 12,000 people for every person with mental health or the lack of resources. And what we were talking about there a lot of the time was about crisis. Yeah. Okay? So the average length of someone having a mental health illness before they reach out is actually 10 years. Yeah. And the thing is, they'll wait and wait and wait to reach out. They won't go to their GP. Sure. They hit crisis. You go to your local GP. For someone like me who suffers with body dysmorphia, they then have a 32-week lead time to yeah. see a specialist. Yeah. So what I've tried to create with Jack, which is uh, jaaq.co.uk, is an interactive platform that you can come and have a conversation with a world-leading doctor or someone with that lived experience. And what I'm trying to get is people to reach out earlier because that, for me, is what's going to solve a lot yeah. of this. And if it's somebody, and I've been making this point from start to finish, because I know people will be listening to these conversations, they'll oh, just pull yourself together, you know, get, sort yourself out. And, and I, I, I don't dislike them, I don't hate them, I don't say they're fundamentally wrong, but in a sense... That's partly fueled by the fact that before you and Alistair Campbell and friends came along, there wasn't a just ask any question place. And therefore, a lot of people were trading in a world of complete ignorance, dismissing it as just being, quotes some nutter, close quotes, which is not only offensive language, it's profoundly wrong. Well, I, I totally agree. And I think... Where that, what, what, what we haven't had before is somewhere to reach out. So if you yeah. look at search, search engines, especially when you're in your first part of your journey and you don't know what you're feeling, you know, is it depression, is it whatever, you go on a search engine, there's five million results and you're taking information from there which you think is correct. So by giving people access to these world-leading doctors 24-7, I think is groundbreaking. The thing is, for me, this is so scalable, right? Mm. So there's so many people who are suffering with in silence where now you've got a platform you can go to, ask relative questions. It's not going to diagnose you, mm. but if you get the right information from the right people, maybe ask Alistair Campbell questions yeah. about his own experience, yeah. you can take something and go, actually, I feel a bit like that. And if you reach out here compared to in crisis the recovery process is a lot quicker, and sure. that's going to help the NHS, yeah. that's going to help... And, and, and I was saying, when I was talking to, to, to Pete earlier, who's a motivational speaker and works with top sports people and business people as well, one of the great strengths of, of Alistair Campbell is that he is very open about the challenges of alcohol and the challenges of depression. That really matters, because it's reassuring. Of course, and I think, again, with the Jack platform, you can go on and speak to people like Alistair Campbell, got David Harewood... Uh, Jimmy Carr's going to come on as well. These are people people recognise. And if you ask them questions about, like, what's the worst thing to say someone with depression, is exactly what you just said. Oh, pull yourself together. He explains why that's the worst thing to say. Because the other thing is we don't... It's not always about people who are in suffering. It's people who are supporting those yeah. people which need the right information. My mum, to have had the right information, would have changed everything yeah. for her. Both... I mean, Marjorie made the point, and that was one of the points, where you were particularly... <laughs> Active, as it were, we're saying about you know, one consultant uh, per 12,000 people who have a challenge. But, but let me reverse that uh, in a sense. And I've been trying to make this point on the programme from, from start uh, to where we are now. And that is actually people like Marjorie and people like you and an army of others out there who are not employed by the state, who are not paid for by the taxpayer, but are people who have a passion and are supported by generous benefactors. You know, it, 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 it's the charity sector doing its own thing, that can not only save taxpayers' money, but actually, in my humble opinion, it can be even more effective than some people in white coats with stethoscopes. I totally agree, and I'll be honest, at the moment, I'm actually funding Jack on my own, my own personal money, because it's very hard to go and raise money. And But I truly believe that something like this, like in schools, for example, you touched on, I think at the moment in the school sector, we're getting middle-aged men with white shirts and lanyards to come in to talk about mental health, and that's been going on for a long time. If you can use an interactive service like Jack, where you can speak to celebrities, world lean doctors, and get it interactive, the kids will be. Can you imagine in a school lesson, Sarah, do you want to come up and ask Alistair Campbell a question about depression? Oh, yeah, I'll do that, rather than them just sitting there. Mm. This, for me, is how we can educate young people in schools. We need to turn with the times and use all this technology to our advantage. And I just think, at the moment, the, the, the services out there are way behind that. So hopefully, with Jack, is going to show the capability of technology used yeah. in the right way to scale, because sure. that's what we need, scale. Let me, let me finish with, with, with uh, as it were, the same question I finished with Marjorie, and I mentioned it to Norman Lamb as well. 
and, uh, and that is, and I'm very conscious of the difference in our age group and, and, and our political experience, but for someone like you to hear a Tory Secretary of State for Education speak about caring and putting front and centre the mental well-being of our young people in school, mm -hmm. absolutely up front, do you look at that here at cynically or do you think, blimey, things have changed since when I was at school? Uh, well, look, everything has improved since I was at school, I'll be honest. <laughs> yeah. uh, and even with mental health, it is improving. People are talking more, but I'll be honest, we've been hearing this a lot about school, about mental health, education, and I'm thinking it's taking too long. Like the, the, the pandemic of what's happened in the last couple of years, yeah. this isn't going to affect us next year. So in the next four, five, six, seven years is the fallout. So we need education in schools now, yeah. not in a year, not in two years. I, 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 I don't hold any brief for Nadim, although I, I do admire him and I know him a bit. But I would just remind you that, A, he's a new Secretary of State for Education. He's only been in office a couple of weeks. And he is the guy who got 80% of the population vaccinated in less than a year. So Absolutely. I'd keep your fingers crossed. If fingers you crossed. And, <laughs> and look, look at Jack as a platform because this is scalable. This is what should be in schools. And I think that's what we need, something scalable, cost-effective, which it is. And hopefully now's the time we, we need to make a difference. Great to meet you.